you, Sean. Sam, say thank you. Bye, Teresa. Okay. Um, so welcome to Beginner Piazza. I'm Teresa. Um, you don't need any props for this class. So um, just get ready to settle in. Um, if you have any yoga music you want to have on in the background, you can go ahead and find a good playlist. And just make sure that you're muted if you're live. Um, besides that, with everything going on this week, I've sort of designed this class to stay close to the ground. That doesn't mean that we're not going to be doing work um, or having a vigorous vinyasa class. It just means that we're going to stay nice and close to the ground. And that's where we're going to start. So you can start laying down on your back. And that's where we're going to do our check-in today. So as you lie down on your back, if you have room, um, I encourage you to take Kali Mudra. So that's clasping all the fingers except for the index fingers. And the index fingers are together. And then having the arms extended up overhead with the Kali Mudra pointing up above you. So while you're here, you can let the eyes close. You can sort of relax the body. And just start to notice the breath. You can notice the way that having your arms extended changes the position of your ribs, changes the way that your lungs can expand through the back body. You can notice the way your body feels on the floor, maybe noticing every place that the floor touches. And we've already taken Kali Mudra. So I wanted to take this time to talk a little bit about Kali Mudra and Kali. So Kali is the goddess of destruction. But really she's the goddess of change. So she dismantles your current path in order to make room for more good. So she is the goddess of transformation and sometimes that looks like destruction. It's a little bit of tough love from Kali. And I thought that this energy might be appropriate to harness for today's class, for this week's class. So if you also agree and this feels something like you connect with it deeply, I encourage you to follow this path. So letting the breath become even longer, maybe thinking more about this idea of Kali, this energy of destruction to make room for change. Settling in on your intention or dedication. And if you have that Ujjayi breath in your practice, the audible breath, you can start that at any time. So it's a slight constriction in the back of the throat. Still breathing in and out through the nose. And slowly you can start to take your Kali Mudra and bring it towards your heart space. So bending at the elbows so that your hands can rest over your chest. And this is where we'll seal all of these intentions and dedications with a really big sighing breath. So breathing in through the nose. And as you exhale, exhale with the mouth. And it's your choice if you wanna keep your eyes closed or start to open them. But you can begin to draw the knees into your chest. Wrap your hands around your knees, start to make circles, massaging your lower back. And maybe going the other way, letting gravity help you out. Spending a little more time wherever you need to. And then coming back to center, let the feet come down to the floor and the knees are bent. 
Crossing your right ankle over your left knee, flex through the right foot and draw the right knee away from you. As you bring your arms open to a T, we're gonna let the both legs drop over to the left side. So the sole of the right foot touches the floor. Our shoulders are both grounded and the gaze is either up by the ceiling or you can shift to look by your right fingertips. So this stretch is really good to open up the IT band. And if you are looking for more sensation, you're not sure where you should be feeling this, you can take your left hand and press your right knee away from you even more. And that'll give you a little bit more sensation. Good, we're gonna take another two breaths here. Since we're still cold, our muscles aren't warmed up yet. Give your body a little more time to settle in. On your next inhale, you can make your way back to center and we'll switch sides. So uncross the right leg and cross the left, flexing the left foot. Draw that left knee away from you as you inhale. And then as you exhale, both legs drop over to the right. This time the sole of the left foot is on the floor and the left knee is up towards the ceiling, up towards the sky. Again, if you want more sensation, your right hand can press your left knee even farther away from you. And your gaze is either up ahead or turning towards the left fingertips. Three breaths. Good, on your next inhale, coming back to center. You can uncross the legs, this time bringing both feet up towards the ceiling, flexing through the feet, nice and active through the legs. Zip those legs together, press through the feet, activate the legs. And then find that Kali Mudra once again, all but the index fingers are clasped and arms are set, extended straight up to the sky. From here, we're going to reach up and tap our toes about five times. We're gonna do it nice and slow. So we'll inhale to prepare at the bottom. And exhale, keep your feet where they are, engage the core, lift, tap with your index fingers against the big toes. Inhale, exhale, lift. Inhale, exhale, lift. Two more, inhale, and exhale, lift. Good. Inhale, coming back to center, you can bend through the knees and start to rock a little bit forward and back along the spine. So we're warming up the spine as we rock forward and back. You can do the whole length a few times or maybe slowly work up to the full rock. And then once uh, you feel good with that, then you can start to find a good seat with the legs out straight. So again, our muscles aren't very warm yet, so this isn't gonna be our deepest forward fold ever, but starting to wake up the backs of the legs. Flexing through the feet, the legs are pretty active, but not so active that the heels lift off the floor. The heels are still grounded. As you inhale, lift through the heart space, lengthen through the spine, and exhale, fold forward, leading with the heart as if your heart's gonna touch your toes. From there, you can walk your hands out for as far as they can go without bringing the shoulders way up by the ears. So we're keeping the shoulders away from the ears and the spine nice and long. Every inhale, allow this length to grow through the heart. And as you exhale, maybe you become a little bit deeper, walking the hands farther. Good, we'll take three more breaths. Good, one more. Nice, walking your hands all the way back up the legs. Bending the knees so the soles of the feet are on the floor. Keep your feet grounded as you hold behind the knees and then keeping the grip behind the knees, start to lean back and imagine concaving your chest. So squeezing through the core, like you're kind of scooping out through the middle here, like a big ice cream scoop through your stomach. So keeping this core engagement with the belly button going towards the spine, Go ahead and find that Kali Mudra once again. All of the index fingers clasp, releasing the backs of the legs. The index fingers are pointing up ahead. We'll inhale in the center. 
and exhale, tapping over to the left. Inhale, center, exhale, tap right. Inhale, center, exhale, left. Inhale, center, exhale, right. Good, keep going on your own. And while you're going, I'm gonna talk about Kali Mudra. So the Mudra is the seal of your hand. So mudras are supposed to connect with the energetic body. And in this case, Kali Mudra is embracing Kali. And in fact, your index fingers symbolize her sword, which slashes through ignorance and illusion. So right now with this movement, you can imagine you got like a big machete in your hands and you're cutting through this forest in order to clear the way for change. Good, so do one more time your side. Good. Inhale back up to center. And then exhale, release the hands. Put the hands by your hips, fingers by your heels. We're going to come up into a reverse tabletop position. So just opening up through the core, pressing through the feet, lifting the hips. The gaze can stay up towards the ceiling. Or if it feels OK on your neck, you can drop the neck all the way back so that the gaze is back behind you. So we're still lifting actively through the hips, we're opening the shoulders, releasing the abs here, and starting to engage more muscles. So one more inhale, wherever you are. And exhale, you can let the seat lower. And then crossing the legs, go ahead, roll over the feet and find a plank pose. So the fingers are wide, shoulder width distance apart, wrists are directly beneath the shoulders, hips are about shoulder height, and the legs are really active. The more active your legs are, the lighter your legs are gonna feel. So really squeeze through the legs, squeeze through the glutes, press the heels away from you as the crown reaches forward. Staying with the breath, take one more inhale. And we'll exhale for our first vinyasa. Lower knees, chest and chin. Elbows stay close to the ribs. Inhale, sliding through baby cobra. And then exhale through tabletop into downward facing dog. First down dog of the day. We'll be here for a few breaths. Go ahead, pedal out the feet. Bend the knees, maybe a little side to side feels good. Knowing that your heels never have to touch the floor. Your legs never have to be straight. It's more important to keep the spine nice and long than it is to ever have the heels touch or have the knee straight. To help out the wrists, you can focus on pressing uh, the index fingers and the thumb. Imagining that there's a space between the index finger and thumb that you could press. Good. Finding stillness, we'll take one more breath. On your next inhale, come forward, plank. And exhale, vinyasa, lowering down, knees, chest, and chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, baby cobra, or cobra or upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. We're gonna do two more vinyasas. Inhale right away, plank pose. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, slide through your back bend. And exhale, downward facing dog. Good, one more time. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower. Inhale, cobra or up dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Good. Building up some heat. Let's take a cleansing breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Inhale the right leg to the sky. Three legged dog. Stack the hips, bend the knee, flex through the foot. Take yourself in, a butt, in the butt a few times. Make big circles with the knee. Just opening up the hips. Keep drawing that right heel towards the floor. Again, it never has to touch the floor. Good. And then finding three-legged dog. Once again, the right toes are pointing down. Exhale, step the right foot all the way forward between the hands. You can help your hands to um, bring the foot up there. From here, staying with this back knee lifted just for a, a few breaths, maybe rocking a little bit forward, a little bit back, a little bit side to side, opening up the hips. Good. Nice. Then dropping the back knee, untuck the back toe, still drawing the hips forward. So bending even more into the right knee, pressing into both feet evenly, 
notice that my back knee is not directly beneath my right hip. So there's not a lot of weight on my knee. I'm drawing the hips forward to bring the weight off of that back knee. And I can press more deeply into the top of the foot. Good. From here, inhale the arm sweep up. Finding that Kali Mudra once again. Fearless goddess of destruction and growth and change. We'll inhale, lifting with the fingers. And as you exhale, lean over to the right. So keeping the shoulders in line with each other, keeping the arms nice and long. Notice where you feel this. Probably a little bit more in the left side, the left hip flexor. Still drawing the hips forward, still bending deeply into the right knee. Good. As you inhale, come back to center. Exhale, release the hands and start to shift the hips back. So we're stacking both hips over the left knee this time. If you want to have a little bit of cushion under the knee, you can fold the mat or grab a blanket. Come into this running lunge, flexing the right toes. As you inhale, lift and lengthen again. Imagine your heart going to touch your right big toe. And as you exhale, let yourself fold a little bit deeper. Good, we're gonna be here for two more breaths. Inhale, lift, lengthen. Exhale, fold deep. One more. Good. And from here, starting to walk the hands forward to come to either side of the right foot. Tuck the back toe, lift the back knee, and keep your left hand grounded as you lift your right arm up to the sky for a twist. Keep your hips level, so don't let your left hip drop way down. Nice and active with the legs. Reaching with the right fingertips. Imagine stacking the right arm on top of the left arm. Good, inhale here. Exhale the right hand back down onto the mat and step the right foot back, plank pose. Inhaling in plank. And exhale, flow through a vinyasa. Lowering down. Inhale, your back bend. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Great job. As you inhale, you can bring the left leg to the sky. Three-legged dog. Stack the hips, bend the knee, flex through the foot, make circles, kick your butt, <laughs> whatever feels good. Trying to find some, a little openness in the hips. Keep that right heel drawn down towards the floor someday. Doesn't ever have to actually meet the floor. And then return to that three-legged dog with the left toes pointed down. The hips are square to the front of the mat. Inhale. Exhale, the left foot steps all the way forward between the hands. Again, use your hands if you need to. Have a nice long stance. We're going to stay here for a few breaths, remember. So feel free to uh, move the hips forward and back, side to side. Good. You can go ahead and drop the back knee, untuck the back toe, draw the hips forward, bending more into that left knee. And then from here, starting to inhale the arms up to the sky and embracing Kali Mudra. So where in your life can you make room for change and growth? Inhale, reaching through the fingers and exhale, leaning over to the left. Noticing the right side body, how it feels. Still drawing the hips forward. Two more breaths. One more. Inhale, coming back to center. Release this Kali Mudra and start to shift the hips back for that running lunge, flexing the left foot. But both the hips are stacked over the right knee. So we're not way back by the heel here. We're stacked over the knee. Inhale, reaching with the heart towards the left toes. And exhale, folding deeper. Two more breaths. Good. From here, bending into the left knee, walk the hands forward, frame the left foot. 
tuck the back toe, lift the back knee and find the twist. Inhale, reaching up with that left hand, keeping the legs active to keep the hips level with each other. Someday stacking the arms one on top of the other. Good, one more inhale. Exhale this left hand down, step the left foot back and make your way through a vinyasa. Inhaling in plank. Exhale, lower and down. Keep the elbows close. Inhale, your back bend. And exhale, downward facing dog. Awesome. Cleansing breath and down dog. Good, from downward facing dog, inhale forward to plank. And then from plank, we're gonna rock over to our right side for right side plank. So options to modify would be dropping the right knee down. But even if you drop the right knee down, you're really pressing really hard into the left foot, almost like there's not a lot of weight on your right knee. So you're really active through the side body and reaching through the left fingertips. And then an option to intensify is to hover this left foot off the floor. So having the right um, knee grounded or hovering the top foot. Awesome, one more inhale, feel that fiery energy. And then exhale, move through plank. From here, we'll right away uh, shift over to the left side. So shifting over left side plank, reaching the right hand up, Option to modify, dropping the bottom knee, pressing into the right foot, reaching with this right hand. Or if you don't modify, you want to intensify, option to cover this top foot. Good, no matter where you are, engage at Ujjayi breath, one more. Good, inhale through the fingers, and exhale, find plank, inhaling in plank, and an option to either vinyasa or come right to downward facing dog. If you vinyasa, as you exhale, you will lower. Inhale, find the back bend. And exhale, moving into downward facing dog. Good. Two more breaths. Beautiful. Inhale, the right leg comes to the sky, three-legged dog. Exhale, step that right foot forward between the hands. Pivot on the back heel, come up for warrior two. So warrior two is your longest stance, almost as long as your mat. Nice deep bend in your right leg, but you can still see your right big toe, so there's a slight external rotation of the right knee. Soft gaze over your right fingertips. Good. As you inhale, flip the front palm, Peaceful warrior, sliding the left hand down the left leg, and then finding side angle pose. Forearm comes to the right leg, left arm reaches all the way up and overhead. Good, so you're one long line from the left foot up to the left fingertips. Good, one more breath. On your next inhale, we'll come all the way back up into that peaceful warrior. Keep this deep bend in the right leg. And exhale, side angle pose once again. So forearm to the leg. Maybe you start to inch down inside this right leg. There's not too much weight on the um, elbow. So you're not just like hanging out, leaning on your right leg here. You're really strong through the core, pressing through the feet, so that as you slide down, um, you don't need to touch the floor right away. Good, one more inhale, coming all the way up, peaceful warrior, keep the bend in the right leg. I know you're feeling it now, so am I. <laughs> and then coming back into that side angle pose. Good, so this is the last side angle pose. You'll either be working on sliding down inside this right leg, so we to touch the floor, or we're going to be taking that Kali Mudra up overhead and really engaging the core and not leaning on this right arm. So your choice, we're gonna be three breaths. I'm that Kali Mudra, reaching up, Good, two more, you got this. Last one. 
Good, root down, rise all the way up, peaceful triangle. So you can straighten that right leg as your left hand slides back, right arm reaches up. And then from here, cartwheel both hands down to frame the right foot. You can pivot up on that back toe. Now combining a little bit of what we just did, you'll inhale to find the twist, right arm reaches up to the sky. Stay here for one breath. Good, as you inhale here, step the right foot back, finding that side plank. Nice, and same option to modify, dropping the bottom leg. One more inhale, and then exhale, find plank pose. Your choice to either float away with a vinyasa or find downward facing dog. If you vinyasa, exhale, lower down. Inhale, your back bend, and exhale, down dog. Beautiful. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. Let it go. We're going to do that one more time. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale the left leg up to the sky. Exhale, step it forward. Warrior two. Pivot on that back heel. Power wheel the arms up. Soft, soft gaze over the left fingers. Maybe on this side, the challenge is to smile. Good, so you know it's coming on this side. Put the left palm up. Inhale, peaceful warrior. Right hand slides on the back leg. Inhaling here. And exhale, side angle pose. Forearm to the left thigh. Right arm up and overhead. Long line on the right side of the body. So really pressing through the right foot. Reaching with the right fingers. Finding that length. Nice and light on the right elbow. Root down to the feet. And the next inhale, peaceful warrior. Keeping the bend in the left knee, left arm reaches up and back. And exhale, side angle pose. So again, on this side, maybe you're starting to inch down the inside of the leg. Someday you'll touch the floor, but you don't have to be there yet. You can just be hovering here, really pressing through the feet, squeezing through the side body. Good. On the next inhale, peaceful warrior, left arm comes up and back. One more time, we're keeping that bend in the left leg. Exhale, side angle pose. So this is the challenge one. So your choice on this side doesn't have to be the same as the first, but either starting to inch your way down, finding this flexibility in the hip, or building that strength in order to become nice and light, finding the Kali Mudra up overhead. Preparing now, we'll be there for three breaths. Two more. Last one. Inhale, rise up, peaceful triangle. Straighten that left leg as the left arm reaches up and back. And then cartwheel both hands down either side of the left foot. Root down with the right hand this time. Inhale, the left arm lifts for that twist. Staying for one breath. And then finding that side plank on the right side. So shifting that left foot back. Option to modify. One more inhale. Exhale, plank pose. Let's flow through our final vinyasa. Inhaling in plank. Exhale, lower. Inhale, your back bend. And exhale to child's pose. So you can let the knees be nice and wide, maybe as wide as the mat, big toes touching. Relax the head all the way down onto the floor. Good, finding the breath, letting the heart rate slow. If your third eye can touch the floor, maybe you rock a little bit side to side, massaging the third eye, massaging your intuition. And let that intuition feel supported by your yoga practice. Good. And from this child's pose, we're going to make our way into puppy pose. So starting to lift the gaze just so that you can press into the palms and start to walk the hands forward so that your hips become, come right over the knees. So if you took that wide leg of child's pose, you might have to walk the knees back in, hips with distance apart. Hips come directly over the knees, 
The arms are out straight, like in downward facing dog, which is why this is called puppy pose. So you're starting with your forehead on the floor. Let the fingers be really wide. Hands are shoulder width distance apart, maybe a little bit wider. And you can stay here with the forehead on the floor, or you can start to shift the gaze towards your fingertips so that your chin is on the floor instead. So finding which way feels best for you, we're gonna stay for four more breaths. Good, letting this open the back body, open up the heart space, shoulders, pressing evenly through the tops of the feet. Two more. And last one. Good, so this time we're gonna slide right on through so that you come up on your elbows, your chest is lifted towards the top of your mat. We're in Sphinx Pose. So for Sphinx Pose, traditionally you're gonna have your hands directly in front of your shoulders, fingers nice and wide and the elbows are right underneath the shoulders. So if your um, elbows are really wide, like mats with distance apart, you're gonna end up having a lot of strain on your neck. Um, and same with if they're too far forward. So find that strong 90 degree angle in your elbow. And like I said, traditionally your hands are directly in front of your elbows, but since we've been working with Kali Mudra all class, um, I offer you to take Kali Mudra here. So clasping all but the index fingers, pressing into the pinky sides of the hands and drawing, uh, having the index fingers forward. Good. So as you're rooted through the elbows, imagine almost pulling your heart forward between the, the thumbs, between the elbows. Tops of the feet are evenly pressing into the floor. The gaze is neutral, so you don't need to be looking way up, but maybe about a foot in front of you. And Sphinx pose is a yin posture, which means that we stay here for a little bit longer than some traditional poses, or maybe longer than you're used to holding poses. So I invite you to either really focus your eyes on something or even close your eyes. And if you have this Kali Mudra, I invite you to envision yourself conquering whatever obstacles lie ahead. So you have the sword of Kali in your hands as your index fingers. And you're using this Kali energy to maybe cause some destruction, but ultimately create space for change. So imagine yourself accomplishing this change. Shoulders are away from the ears. Really actively pressing the pinky sides of the hands into the mat. Three more breaths. Last breath. So you can clasp the hands together and use your hands to make a pillow. Let your head rest on your hands. Bend through the knees and windshield wiper the legs side to side to release any tension in the lower back. And then start to make your way onto your back. So just turning yourself over. Good. From here, soles of the feet are grounded, knees are bent. I'm gonna find a modified pigeon. So a pigeon lying on your back, starting with crossing your right ankle over your left knee. So it looks a little familiar. Drawing that right knee away from you. Maybe even just using your right hand to press the right knee away. 
If you already feel sensation, then you'll be staying here, starting to open up your hips this way, making sure that you're flexing through your right foot. That'll help protect the right kneecap. Good. If you're not feeling any sensation yet, we'll continue. So from here, you will um, reach the hands between the legs to wrap around the back of the left leg. And once your left foot lifts off the floor, make sure you're flexing your left foot too. Shoulders stay grounded. Maybe you use your right elbow to press once again your right leg away from you. And maybe this is where you're feeling enough sensation. Maybe you'll stay here. Or if you are um, one of those people that you can, you can bend your left knee practically all the way to your chest, then you can extend that left leg straight and shift the grip actually above your right shin to your left calf. And this is um, assuming that your shoulders can stay grounded. There's no real strain on your neck here. So finding wherever that feels good and start to close the eyes. We're gonna be here for three more breaths. Good, last breath. So if your left leg is straight, you can start to bend it. If the left foot is lifted, start to return it to earth. And then we'll uncross the right leg and windshield wiper the leg. So let the legs drop over to one side and then the other. And then we'll switch sides for this reclined pigeon on the left side. So flexing through the left foot, cross the left ankle over the right knee. And first start off by just using your left hand to press the left knee away from you if you feel the sensation here, because both sides can be very different, not just jumping into whatever you did on the first side. So you can stay here or you can start to lift that right knee, flex through that right foot and reach the hands for behind the right leg. Maybe here you can use your left elbow to press that left leg away. A little more sensation. Shoulders are grounded, no weight in the head or neck. Maybe on this side you can go the next step, which is straightening the right leg and shifting that grip above the left shin so that you're holding on to the calf or the ankle. Keeping the shoulders grounded. The breath is nice and even. Maybe you close the eyes for the last three breaths here. Good, last breath. Coming out the same way you came in, bending the leg, returning that right foot to the floor, uncrossing the legs and windshield wiper the legs side to side. So this time as we're windshield wipering the legs, you can bring your arms open to a T and next time they drop over to the left, you can let them stay there for the gentle twist. Your gaze can shift over towards your right fingertips. Feeling the length on the whole right side of your body. And then switching sides as you inhale and exhale, the knees drop over to the right, the gaze is over to the left. Inhale up to center. And the last pose before Shavasana will be happy baby. So go ahead and bring your knees in towards your chest. Reach through the insides of your knees to the outsides of your feet. Soles of the feet up to the sky. Knees close to the shoulders. Almost like you can someday pull your arms and have your knees tap the sides of you. The whole length of the spine is grounded. And it might feel good to rock a little bit side to side or to extend one leg at a time, or you can even extend both legs. Whatever last movements your body might be asking for, 
doesn't have to be an official yoga pose or anything. Just if there's anywhere in your body that needs a little extra love before we move into Shavasana, anything that'll help you totally relax. And then we'll all be making our way into Shavasana. If you want any props like a blanket to put over you or a pillow to put under the legs, you can grab them now. If you're going through those final movements, take another breath or two and then make your way into your Shavasana position. So letting yourself take up a lot of space. And you can take traditional Shavasana with the palms face up by your side or for this class, if you wanted to take that same Kali Mudra above the head as we took to start, but just letting the arms sort of relax, the elbows bow out to the side. You can choose to do that too. However you feel the most comfortable today, start to make your way there. Let the eyes close. Let the body be heavy and supported. Relaxing the space between your eyebrows. Relaxing your eyelids and relaxing your nostrils. Unclenching your teeth, let the whole lip region relax. All the muscles of the face are relaxed. Let that relaxation travel down your neck across your collarbone, down your arms, all the way to your wrists and hands and fingertips. That relaxation travels back up the arms to the back body, to the shoulders, follows the spine all the way down. Relaxing the whole back body, all the way to the hips, the backs of the legs are relaxed, the heels and the soles of the feet, the toes are relaxed. And this relaxing energy shifts to the tops of the feet. The tops of the ankles, your shins, the knees, the legs, up the whole front body, all the way to your heart space. Letting all this relaxation settle in in the heart space. Taking a few more breaths, letting the whole body feel relaxed. Keeping your eyes closed, don't move a muscle. Remaining in Shavasana for a little while longer, begin to acknowledge that you showed up today. Acknowledge that you did the hard work.
Gently, you can start to wiggle the toes. Release the mudra if you have it. Start to wiggle the fingers. Roll out the ankles, roll out the wrists. Let these movements grow bigger. And then rolling over to your right side, start to bring your knees in towards your chest. Finding fetal pose. And lying here, you can stay for a few more breaths to return to your intention or dedication, this Kali energy. You can stay here and thank your body who's always taking care of you. And you can stay here to just listen and let your body thank you. And then keeping the eyes closed, you can press yourself up to sit. And whenever you find your way to sit, your hands can either rest on your knees or they can come to heart center. Thank you all so much for sharing your practice with me. It's been such an honor guiding you. Thank you for being open to this Kali energy, um, making way for change, even if it means causing a little bit of destruction. I hope you have a wonderful week, knowing that you are as much a part of the universe as the trees and the stars, and though there's no way we can know for sure, there's also no doubt that the universe is unfolding exactly the way that it should. Namaste.